Uh, moving now to news and to debates that are creating controversy here. And it's a war of words that became worse today with the Congress and the BJP coming to verbal blows over Press Council Chairman Justice Karchu. Justice Karchu, meanwhile, on the offensive, saying it is now time for Arun Jaitley to take sannyas. Mr. Jaitley had attacked him, saying that he was politically biased because of his recent article against Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi. He is using words like nonsense, like rubbish, which are, you know, which is a language which is not used by a judge. So what kind of judge Sri Karju was, I don't know. But I am convinced that he does not deserve to be the chairman of an important body. He criticize that everyone is wrong. But he is not is why he is press council. Justice Karju has raised the issues, the developmental issues of Gujarat. Is it because he owes his Raj Sabha seat to Mr. Narendra Modi that Mr. Arun Jaitley feels that he should uh, defend Mr. Narendra Modi? Arun Jaitley accusing Justice Karju of being pro-Congress and demanding that he be sacked. In an article critical of Narendra Modi, Justice Karju compared the Gujarat riots to Nazi Germany and said, I do not buy the story that Mr. Modi had no hand in the events of 2002. BJP's Arun Jaitley hit back, saying his attacks on non-Congress governments seem more in the nature of thanksgiving to those who provided him with a post-retirement job. I demand Mr. Arun Jaitley's resignation. So, in fact, he should resign and take up sannyas. He is not fit to be in politics. Mr. Arun Jaitley forgets when, that when NDA government was in power and Mr. Arun Jaitley was law minister, there were large number of appointments of retired judges to various posts. There is one Justice Rama Joyce, who after retirement was appointed governor of Bihar and presently he is Raj Sabha member on BJP ticket. So what is uh, what nonsense is Arun Jaitley talking? Narendra Modi tweeted, Justice Karju looks at Gujarat with a jaundiced eye. Not just Congress and BJP, now the Janata Dal United has also come out strongly on Justice Karju and his statements. When you resort to personal opinion as fact stated publicly, then you act upon it in your capacity as press council chief. I am afraid you are blurring the lines between both jurisdiction and personal opinion. Joining me this evening is the chairman of the Press Council of India, retired justice Markande Karchu. Thank you, sir, for joining me. At the heart of the current debate, sir, is Mr. Arun Jaitley and the BJP's uh, comment now that if you wish to get involved in political debate or comment on politics, you must resign from your post, which they say is a quasi-judicial one. What would you say in response, sir? I think Mr. Arun Jaitley should resign from politics altogether and take up sannyas. He, he twists facts. He misstates facts. He has uh, said that I have only criticized uh, non-Congress governments, when the truth is I have very often criticized Congress governments, like in that Facebook, um, in that um, Shaheen girl's um, arrest case, and in the Asim Trivedi's case, I criticized the Maharashtra government. I criticized the uh, chief minister of uh, Himachal Pradesh, who is the Congress chief minister for uh, telling a media person that he will break his camera. I criticized the Delhi government uh, for uh, harassing Iftikar Jilani and his family. And also uh, when the Delhi gang rape uh, agitation was taking place, many media persons were attacked by the yes. police. I criticized the Delhi government, which is the Congress government. So Mr. Arun Jaitley has twisted, completely uh, uh, twisted facts and said, I only criticize non-Congress government. Look at the, look at the way and look at the language he has used. Call me megalomaniac and his friend uh, uh, Rudy has called me a vagabond. Look at the low level to which these people can go. No, but Using foul, foul language. No, but uh, Justice uh, Karchu, uh, you're, you're targeting Arun Jaitley now, but some would say, sir, that you have gone beyond your brief in a sense. Are you commenting on this entirely in your personal capacity on Mr. Modi's uh, government, on the comparison the BGP says that you made between Mr. Modi and uh, the times of Hitler? Is this in your personal capacity completely? 
Yes, let me reply in a little detail. Mm -hmm. I am not only chairman of Press Council of India. I am also a citizen of India. And become, by becoming chairman Press Council, I do not cease to be a citizen of India. I often make statements uh, about the press, uh, where press freedom has been violated, whether by Congress government or non-Congress government. That is in my capacity as chairman of Press Council. Mm -hmm. But I also make statements on other issues, non-press issues, uh, which are of public importance as a responsible citizen of India. I have a right to do so. You have also a right to do so. And a duty to do. Everybody has a right to do so. We are concerned about our country. And uh, uh, this uh, campaign which was being whipped up, that Modi is the modern uh, Moses, the Messiah who will lead the Indian people yes. into a land of milk and honey. Development is taking place everywhere in Gujarat. See, I had to clarify because the people of India were being misguided. Uh, but sir, I think your point There's is that you uh, you do not give up your rights to freedom of expression as a citizen of India. But yes. let me just quote what Mr. Jaitley and the BGP's argument is. That as chairman of the press council, you discharge a statutory job. This requires fairness, impartiality and political neutrality. When, as even as a citizen of India, you express views like this, wouldn't it be that tomorrow if you are expressing a view on, say, press freedom in Gujarat, Mr. Modi would be within his rights to consider that you are biased against him. Listen, as regards the COSI judicial functions of the press council, they are exercised when some complaint comes against some media person or media house or some media person complains against uh, some authority, mm -hmm. we adjudicate upon it. Now that is the uh, uh, function of the press council in its judicial capacity. Apart from that, there is a duty of the uh, press council under the Press Council Act to uphold media freedom and uphold high standards of journalism. Mm -hmm. So I often make comments about the uh, media where I uh, feel that media freedom is being threatened. And in addition, I also make comments on non-media issues which are of public importance where I feel that as a responsible citizen I should speak out. This, this is a very important issue that whether, whether the, uh, uh, that what is the real uh, uh, criteria for development? Is it raising the standard of living of the 80, 90 percent poor masses or is it giving concession, concessions to big business houses? What but, is the test of, uh, uh, and people were being befooled by this propaganda but, but, which was but, but, uh, launched but, at home. Uh, Yes, but uh, sir, when you, were, when you were a sitting Supreme Court judge, you may have held similar views, but you would not have expressed them because you were a sitting Supreme Court judge. Don't the same standards of conduct apply in a sense now when you are still occupying a statutory position? No, because uh, the uh, uh, sitting Supreme Court judge's uh, uh, post is very different from chairman of press council. For instance, a sitting Supre uh, Supreme Court has, uh, judges have got power of contempt of court. I don't have power of contempt of court. They are very different uh, functions.